It seems Elon Musk has a new foe in the crosshairs. The tech CEO threatened to sue the Anti-Defamation League after blaming the organization for an advertising revenue slump on X, formerly known as Twitter. Musk accused the ADL of, quote, trying to kill the platform by falsely accusing it and him of being anti-Semitic. He continued, to clear our platform's name on the matter of anti-Semitism, it looks like we have no choice but to file a defamation lawsuit against the Anti-Defamation League. Oh, the irony. To be super clear, I'm pro-free speech, but against anti-Semitism of any kind. Our U.S. advertising revenue is still down 60%, primarily due to pressure on advertisers by the ADL. That's what advertisers tell us, so they almost succeeded in killing ex-Twitter. Friend of the show, Batya Angar Sargon, reacted to the lawsuit news, tweeting, So much for free speech. Apparently, it doesn't extend to an organization warning advertisers that Twitter is full of anti-Semites, which it is. Journalist Glenn Greenwald weighed in on the matter, writing, One of the most toxic and repellent developments over the last decade is the aggressive but cynical weaponization of various strains of bigotry accusations for cheap partisan gain, to justify censorship, one's adversaries, and to coerce compliance. Few are more guilty than the ADL. The Anti-Defamation League published a report in May that found over 5,000 examples of allegedly virulent anti-Semitism on Twitter after accounts were reinstated under Elon Musk, and an ADL spokesperson said in an emailed statement to Axios that the nonprofit doesn't comment on legal threats as a matter of policy, but had this to say on the platform status on X. ADL is unsurprised yet undeterred that anti-Semites, white supremacists, conspiracy theorists, and other trolls have launched a coordinated attack on our organization. This type of thing is nothing new. Yeah, I think it is true what Glenn Greenwald has said. Um, there have been many times when the ADL uh, and its current leadership have been accused of weaponizing, I think accurately, weaponizing claims of anti-Semitism against political actors that they simply don't like because of their advocacy for Palestinian rights. Um, we've seen that in a lot of the kerfuffles over various elected representatives on the left in Congress. But in this instance, it's interesting to see even people who themselves have been victims of ADL attacks um, uh, speaking out, saying that this is an obviously bad faith attack uh, against the ADL by Elon Musk. So you have someone like Mark Lamont Hill, who I believe was let go from his job on MSNBC because of, of charges exactly of anti-Semitism, saying that, quote, Elon Musk's attack on the ADL is dangerous, dishonest, and deeply anti-Semitic. He turned his platform into an unprofitable white supremacist cesspool. Instead of taking accountability, he has chosen to not so subtly scapegoat Jews, which invites violence from his Nazi base. Um, on the other side of things, you know, libs of TikTok has encouraged this lawsuit. People believe that the the, the uh, disclosures that would happen in the course of filing this lawsuit might really help Elon's case. Other people say, be careful what you wish for, as we've seen in the um, Fox News uh, lawsuit case. All kinds of things that are disfavorable can come out in, in discovery. I, I don't know. What, what do you make of this? Well, look, as a matter of law, and policy, I'm not a big fan of frivolous um, lawsuits over speech. Um, I, I would have to look more closely at exactly what Elon Musk is accusing the ADL of that he thinks is defamatory. But I would be very not inclined to agree with a lawsuit being merited um, in general. I, I, you know, I, we were on the different sides of the Dominion thing. I didn't really necessarily know that they should bring a lawsuit against that either. So on, in terms of bringing a lawsuit, I likely strongly disagree with Elon Musk here. That said, I do not put a lot of faith in, well, I mean, this is, you were agreeing with this, so it's not counter what you're saying at all. But I, and I've actually I've dug even deeper into the the um, not just the Anti-Defamation League statements, but it's um, it's published statistics about anti-Semitic hate crimes that are wildly misleading and are frequently mischaracterized in, in the media, even when their underlying uh, study is not wrong. I remember writing about this. I just pulled this up. So this was all the way back in. Um, so this was about their this was in 2017 or 2018. It was about their 2016 report uh, or they're about their 2017 report on um, on a, a purported 60% spike in anti-Semitic attacks. And this was written about in the New York Times. It was written about in the Washington Post. Um, I remember Julia Ioffe on CNN said that based on this study, Trump has radicalized more people than ISIS ever did. 
um, citing the ADL report on this 60% increase in anti-Semitic attacks. Then you look at what they're actually describing. Well, they're not, it's not actually attacks, it's anti-Semitic incidents, the majority of which, uh, so a lot of the increase is um, a supposedly anti-Semitic valence of school incidents. Also, a campaign of bomb threats that were made, that it turned out the person making the bomb threats was an Israel, a deranged Israeli teenager. And then the actual category of anti-Semitic violence had actually gone down. It had gone well, down that that's year. Interesting and those statistics are wielded by a the ADL and their allies in such bad faith. So I, I w without knowing the specifics of what they're telling advertisers here, it would not surprise me at all if the picture they're painting is does bears no resemblance to reality. It does seem to me that violence isn't really the issue here. This is a social media platform that people Mm -hmm. apparently don't want to advertise on anymore because people are saying anti-Semitic and racist and otherwise bigoted things on the app. So this isn't a question of whether or not there's actually been more hate cri crimes or stochastic terrorism or mm -hmm. anything like that. It is whether or not there is a greater incidence of even if it's largely superficial, doesn't actually hurt anybody. Language, which is so toxic that advertisers feel like it's bad for their brand to use this But the ADL website. is the mediator, right? It's the one telling the advertisers that these things have increased uh, and that there's more of them. Uh, according to Elon Musk, I think they're, just, they're saying it out loud in the world, but here's the evidence the ADL has put out there. Um, this is from an article in the New York Times uh, from earlier this year. It says, the Anti-Defamation League, which files regular reports of anti-Semitic tweets to Twitter and keeps track of which posts are removed, so the company has gone from taking action on 60% of tweets it reported to only 30%. Now, you can think that every single thing that they reported was wrong and that Elon Musk should not take action on those tweets because it's free speech and they should stay up. But that's not exactly the question here. The question is, is there going to be a refutation of the underlying claim that they are taking few, less action on these no. tweets? It, advertisers don't care about free speech. The advertisers right. might want a world where they are taking more action on the kind of what tweets if, that the ADL finds but, to be upsetting. Right, but what if, what if Elon Musk, what if X is taking less action on the tweets because the ADL was flagging your tweets criticizing the state of Israel as anti-Semitic, or the, maybe it but, was correct. Maybe their view of what is what they have to was prove, wrong. What they would have to prove is that the ADL is making more submissions and that that accounts for a lower reply rate. If, in fact, the ADL is making a similar amount of submissions yeah. and the, the Twitter is acting on fewer of those submissions, then you can think that Twitter is in the right in doing so, but they don't. They have to deal with the consequences that advertisers might want them to take down more of what the ADL perceives to be hate speech. Right. And that's just that's that's a, a, well, a financial decision that Elon Musk is making. Do you care more about what the advertise if the advertisers and the ADL's interests are happen to be aligned here? But we're, we're saying. We're saying the ADL, again, I don't know specifically, but it would not surprise me given their long history of exaggerating these statistics, which I've reported on, the, we're saying the, the accusation is that the ADL is misrepresenting the state of anti-Semitism as they are wont to do on, that they were filing, just like, just, like every, just like the State Department and everyone else saying, take action on these Russian bots, on this Russian misinformation, on this election denial, and it's actually jokes or satire or not Russian accounts, right, just but, as the, 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 the watchdog the groups have been discredited Twitter. on. I, I, right, I, they I, were before, they were before the company was taking down all these things because they were just doing what the agencies or the watchdogs or the hate crime trackers or the State Department wanted them to do, and now they've stopped, and, and, and right. now they're not doing it because they have new management, and those requests were, were not in good faith and were not Okay, credible. but the point is, I'm not, this isn't about the quality of the requests. This is about the fact that they are not taking action on the request. By Elon Musk's own admission, they're not taking as much action on these requests because they think it's more free speechy. Great. But there are consequences. No, it, might not, it might not be just, it, no, it might not be because it's more free speechy. It's because these requests are not Fine. credible. Fine, they're not credible. But the advertisers want him to take them down. So Elon Musk is living in a, in a world. Because the ADL tells them that. Wait, what? The, the, the advertisers are not are not like tracking the tweets. The ADL is the tweet tra tracking organization that they rely on. No. We're saying the organization they rely on <laughs> no, no, is no. a bad organization. There are multiple tweet tracking organizations who have reported about a, an increased incidence in hate crimes. Uh, for example, uh, and I just one, explained to you why they're wrong. Why why they no, why you, in the why they have a history of of exaggerating it. The, you've been talking about the ADL. There's yes. been reporting of other groups that are not the ADL and not affiliated with the ADL who have pointed to an increase in hate crimes on the app. The State Department? The I mean, I, I, so these organizations, look, no, I'd have to look State at it Department. specifically, but these organizations don't 
do not deserve a lot of them. Obviously, I have to look at specifically what the organization is, but some, you know, some disinformation watchdog group that says, you know, there's that Russian propaganda is all over the site and nothing's being done about that. That doesn't raise your eyebrows at this point. I don't. You sitting here saying, well, everybody who comes up with any information must be the deep state I mean, and anti-speech. How many times do they have to be discredited before uh, we I, say I, that maybe advertisers shouldn't listen to them? I don't know. I get a little tired of being woke, waking up and seeing the N-word a million day, t times a day on the internet. But hey, that's just my subjective view. Maybe everything's exactly the same as it always is. But Elon Musk has literally told us. He has told us that he's taking less action on things that used to be taken down. Yeah. It is perfectly fine to think that he's in the right. Fine. You think that all that stuff is free speech? Let it be on the app. But That's you don't not get what to I'm saying. I'm not saying I think it's all free speech. I'm saying the people saying these things should be taken down have lost Robbie, their credibility. If you think, say it's me. Say yeah. it's someone censoring. Someone the ADL would have said Brianna's not allowed to say free Palestine. Right. And now Brianna that, that is allowed to say very well could have been the case. That's fine. But if the Advertisers don't want me to say free Palestine and choose not to advertise but that's not on the, the app. That is not the case. That is manifestly, I, you are misrepresenting the case. I, I, the ADL is telling the advertiser that there is anti Semitism, and what they mean is you saying free Palestine. So I'm not talking about the ADL. I don't the know. The advertiser how many times doesn't, they don't that. care about if free Palestine, and they, they don't care one way. They it care about analogy. humoring what the ADL tells them. They're not seeing the actual content. The organization is. It was an analogy that I raised. Because you insisted that we're talking about stuff that is legitimate speech. So I've made an analogy that is using an example that I obviously find to be legitimate speech because right. I'm but saying it. But it's a your point because the advertisers are not seeing I don't, that I, You keep moving the goalposts, Robbie. Make up your own analogy. The point is that whatever the information, no matter how legitimate, the point is that if the, if the advertisers agree that it should not, that they don't get to sell their products as much and it's not beneficial for them to be on the app if that stuff is being taken down. If some of what Elon Musk is leaving up is offensive to advertisers, then he is gonna lose money. And that's not the ADL's fault, it's the advertiser's it fault. Is. So for example, not the ADL, a group called the Institute for Strategic Dialogue, a think tank that studies online pro, uh, platforms, found according to the uh, New York Times that uh, the lack of action extends to new accounts, um, the lack of action taken by Elon Musk as owner of Twitter, extends to new accounts affiliated with terror groups that uh, other Twitter, of and others that Twitter previously banned. In the first 12 days after Musk assumed control, 450 accounts associated with ISIS were created, up 69% from the previous 12 days. Um, uh, and, on, and on and on and on. We have reported on, it is not conjecture that when you go and you email to report issues with Twitter now, um, you get a bounce back often of a poop emoji because so many um, people who used to be responding to those kind of requests uh, were fired. That is the you know belief. They have, you know, and, and they're just gonna have to deal with this. Um, Twitter also has had very obvious public relations issues in April, they mistakenly gave a gold check mark, which is supposed to signify a paying advertiser, to the at Disney Junior UK account, which Disney doesn't own. That account posted racial slurs, leading Disney officials to demand from Twitter an explanation and assurances that it wouldn't happen again. This is all reporting from two different articles in the New York Times about this. So we don't really have to speculate. There have been own goals repeatedly executed by Elon Musk himself choosing to allow um, Kanye West to come back to the app. Frankly, a move that I kind of supported because I thought that banning him was not in line with his own stated Twitter policies is going to have an effect on advertisers because we have been talking on and on about this being a free speech issue when it in fact is not. At the end of the day, he bought a business that was worth $44 billion that is now worth half that because 90% of Twitter, Twitter revenue was about advertisers. So if you want to buy an app to make it an open free, free speech bastion, that's great. Maybe I as a journalist not, like and support not that. The, that's not the issue here. That's just not the issue. The advertisers can do whatever they want. If they don't want to advertise on Twitter, sorry, Elon Musk, you, nobody, you can't sue anybody to make them advertise. That's, if, if they want, the platform is not the way they want it to be and they don't want to be involved with it, there's literally nothing you can do about that. But I, what I'm saying is the middleman here, the, the, the watchdogs, the trackers, the, I mean, there's nothing, again, I don't think they should be sued. I think they get to say false things and categorize people incorrectly and make lists of people and say all these people should be unpersoned and canceled even when they're, because they're ISIS, even if they're just telling jokes or their satire accounts, they get to do that. But I, we also get to call them out and people like us and like Glenn Greenwald and other you know, dissident, contrarian type people on the internet are increasingly onto their game that they are, that they, they ha should not be viewed as credibly as they've been viewed in the past. You brought up this, I just looked them up, it's not surprising, the Institute for Strategic 
dialogue. They work with a number of Western governments, Canada, Norway, the Netherlands, Germany, the UK, and the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, and also, like, it's the same grouping of people who, who would qu qualify us as rush agents of Russian misinformation. So, like, I'm sorry if I'm not just, like, immediately buying into the idea that if they make a list of ISIS accounts and say, yeah, if, you're, if you don't get rid of all of these, you're a pro-ISIS uh, pro network and Twitter shouldn't have, you shouldn't advertise on Twitter anymore. Like, I just don't, maybe that's the case. I'd have to look at more specifically exactly what accounts they want banned. But how many times do we have to find that these organizations, which are run through with government funding, are not actually serving the best interests of policing hate or misinformation or all that stuff? And again, that's not my argument. My argument is not that the claims, the, the desire to get the things pulled down are legitimate and good faith. Or but isn't that, that the meaty part of this? I don't, we're, we're talking past each other. I don't know. As I was saying, my argument is not that the stuff is being taken down is legitimate. The question is whether or not Elon Musk's claim that the ADL of all the organizations that have made accusations that Twitter is a more hostile, more racist, more bigoted place than it was under the previous leadership is responsible for his radical dip in revenues, and not multiple different organizations who have assessed what many people have personally experienced, which is an increase in hateful language, the likes of which the average advertiser doesn't want to have their stuff alongside. And Elon Musk personally has boosted content. You can like libs of TikTok, but the average advertiser doesn't want their product associated with a site that is targeting historically marginalized groups the way that Libs of TikTok does. You can agree with their politics, but you cannot coerce Nike to want to be associated with Elon Musk in an app that he is increasingly and purposefully and art, obviously, out, he says that out loud, wanting to move in a more rightward direction. Not in a neutral direction, but explicitly in a more rightward direction. And you're gonna you're suing the ADL all day and night is not gonna make that the perception of advertisers that that is what Twitter has become any less real. Okay. It's 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 the ADL giving those advertisers that perception and I'm questioning whether that's fair given the ADL's track record and organizations like it of looking at these issues. But I don't care if the, if the advertisers yes, do whatever they it's, want. It's all the ADL and not at all Elon Musk letting his friend uh, Kanye West back on the app after tweeting uh, a bunch of anti-Semitic tweets in a row saying, we're going to go DEFCON 3 on the Jews. I mean, you know, the, the ADL and organizations like them do contact all these and say, hey, why are you advertising right. on that? Here, yeah, look, here's yeah, all look, the reasons Elon you Musk should... is blameless. But for the ADL, nobody would ever believe that Elon Musk had any kind of bigoted thoughts, feelings, or beliefs. Okay. All right. That's the debate. Uh, we talk about it and you decide more rising right after this.